This guy's driven to work like this a whole block for 12 years, and he's never noticed his own street until today? You want to see the value of a street that works? Come here, take a look at this. I'll show you value. Trees, very valuable, and people seem to like them. Speaking of people, they're good for you, too. And cars, couldn't get along without them. But you know how too much of a good thing can just spoil a neighborhood. Now, that guy you saw a moment ago seems clueless to the value of streets. He thinks they're only for cars. But, oh, there's so much more to streets. This video is a brief overview of street projects in Seattle and is meant to get you thinking about the possibilities for creating streets that work for you and your neighborhood. We're going to spend the next few minutes visiting some streets that work and meeting the people who help make them that way. First, we'll look at the kinds of ideas and things that can make good streets. Next, we'll hear how people have improved pedestrian safety at intersections. And last, we'll visit some neighborhoods to learn how and why their streets work. Ready? Making a great street is not brain surgery. It involves a relationship between some very simple elements. It involves a street, it involves a sidewalk, it involves a building, and it involves a parking lot. The most important rule is to keep the parking lot away from the sidewalk. Keep it behind the building, on top of the building, underneath the building, anywhere except right by the sidewalk. But once you have that relationship set up, you still need a bunch of details to make it a comfortable place. You need things like places to buy a newspaper, places to sit and read the newspaper. You need plants and flowers. You need a place to rock your bike. It's these small little details that make a place comfortable and the kind of place you'd want to hang out. One of the key things we do here in the engineering department is to balance the ever-growing demand on our transportation system, the demand of cars, trucks, buses, pedestrians, bicyclists, and even trains. At the same time, we need to take into account special needs, such as extra long trucks or buses that may need additional room to maneuver, or pedestrians who have mobility concerns or may be confined to a wheelchair or need a walker. So as your communities get together and discuss the designing of your streets, it's very important that you make safety the number one priority and consider the entire transportation network of which your community is an integral part. Every street obviously has its history, but consider Seattle without Madison Street or the boulevard system developed in the early century by the Olmsteads. It would be impoverished without them. They bind the city together. Madison Street from Elliott Bay to the lake, it opened up the entire east side of the lake with the ferry system. And the boulevards, what do they do? They bind the city through its parks, through its green spaces. Without Madison Street and the boulevard system, the city would be much the lesser. I'm a native of Seattle and a business owner here on Broadway for the past eight years. The building used to have a rather blank face to the street. And since the Broadway market opened, there have been an incredible aliveness formed with open windows and many small shops of great variety. This interaction between the inside and the outside uh, has made a great difference in the quality of community in the neighborhood here. And I feel that this interaction can be valuable to any community. The East Shelby Street combines sewer overflow project 
started out as just another regular sewer improvement job, which quickly captured the um, enthusiasm of an entire community. Uh, usually we go out to a community and we tell them how much we're not going to disrupt them, or if we do, that we will put it back to its pre-existing condition when we leave, or better. And this time when we went and talked to them, they had not only listened politely to what I had to say, but they said, fine, Pam, that's interesting, but look at what we have for you. They came fully prepared with their own schematics, several scenarios, some wonderful ideas, a, a, an organized transportation plan encompassing four or five intersections, not just the one here at East Shelby, where it intersects with Boyer and Furman. There was some really good lessons learned here in that when a community is prepared and they can work together with a project that's just in the area, they can piggyback, like the one that's going on in Lake Union next for me, and they're able to save a, a lot more money, do more with less. I'm standing on 2nd Avenue in the heart of Belltown. The street improvements that are underway right now are actually the culmination of about 10 years of effort. The city um, came up with a plan to develop uh, the Belltown area into a residential community and found that the street ambience was what was really holding the area back. So through a small street improvement project, small series of trees, and then later an incremental step-by-step -step approach to upgrading the street and the businesses around there, they were able to really transform this area into a much more viable mixed-use residential community. And I think the message, or the bottom line of this uh, effort, was that such an incremental approach, if you stick with it, can really help to build a viable neighborhood. No matter how busy your street is, you're most likely going to have to cross it sooner or later. And every good crossing will tell you where you are so that you'll know where you're going. Hmm. Xanadu? Officer! Officer, excuse me, can you tell me how to get to Xanadu? Xanadu, sure. Straight across the bridge, turn left, through the light, uh, go about 17 and a half thousand miles, you'll see it on your left-hand side, okay? He just made that up, right? And where's his motorcycle? Intersections. They're the most complicated part of a pedestrian's life, where car and walker meet. Over the years, we've developed a number of ways to improve crossings for pedestrians. The simplest and most cost-effective is to stripe the crosswalk. I prefer the zebra crossing because they make it evident to the car driver that the pedestrian has a right of way. In addition to that, one can extend the sidewalk in the intersection so the pedestrian moves closer to traffic, and it's obvious to drivers that they want to cross. You can also add a mid-block crossing so pedestrians can cross between intersections and add a refuge in the center of the street as we're now standing on. Of course, planting trees, adding lights, crosswalk signs helps. Those are some of the things you should consider when trying to improve the intersection crosswalk in your neighborhood. I'm on the corner of Harvard and Roy on Capitol Hill, and I've lived in the building located on this corner for 10 years. In the past, this has been an extremely dangerous corner as it's been cut widely and cars travel quickly around the corner. It's uh, created a situation where um, all of us that live here need to go up uh, another block just to get up to the Broadway district and cross safely. I became involved with the committee to improve this corner uh, two years ago, and my function has been help raising money. Uh, once we started working with our neighbors and convincing them that this would enhance the value of their property, we started to get a lot of cooperation. Uh, even though the project has progressed slowly and has had some frustrations, uh, now that it has commenced, um, our neighbors have all been getting involved and excited about what's happening uh, to this corner uh, of the hill. Uh, it's caused a, a bonding between neighbors and we've gotten to know each other better. Uh, it's exciting for, for this corner, um, for us and that live here, and I'm sure other people visiting will enjoy it as much as we are going to. We're here at 20th and Lane with a project where the community and the city have gotten together to recognize that the city street system must work for everyone. They've created a transportation uh, project that narrows the street by use of curb bulbs, and that narrows the crossing distance for pedestrians. That's particularly important on this street, which is a designated school route. The street also provides access for children and adults to nearby transit service, local parks, and other school activities. 
this is a project where the, the city has really, really tried to, to integrate land use issues with transportation issues, and they've come up with a, a really interesting solution that provides both an aesthetically pleasing, a safe, and an affordable solution to a traffic problem. Okay, what do you say we slow down here and take a little break and forget all about this information for a second and, well, do some gardening. Look at this beautiful plant. This is so relaxing, don't you think? Well, back to work. Hey, Lucy. our neighborhood became interested in traffic calming devices is because we had some traffic problems. We had high volumes, high speed, and unacceptably high accident rates at certain intersections. We talked to the engineering department and they suggested that traffic circles alone could reduce traffic accidents by up to 90 percent. That sounded pretty good to us. We've had several traffic circles installed. They work pretty well, particularly when they're clustered together along the same street. We've also had some chicanes installed. They work really well because they slow the traffic to a single lane and people have to maneuver through them. My suggestion to any other neighborhood groups that might be interested in putting together a neighborhood traffic plan is it takes a lot of work, but it's worth it. Uh, there's a lot of fundraising involved. It's really important to get a broad base of community support and uh, it takes a lot of time, but for us, it's finally starting to pay off. Not all neighborhoods start with the same conditions. Here in Greenwood, north of 85th, there are no sidewalks uh, and drainage. The amount and speed of cut through traffic from bordering major arterials causes pedestrian problems on unimproved streets. Walkways and traffic calming improvements can provide a safe environment, but trade-offs may have to be made in parking and landscaping. The streets in this Squire Park neighborhood in the central area have a whole lot of the characteristics that can make streets a wonderful contribution to the qualities of a place to live. Things like grand old trees, extra wide uh, planting strips, uh, community gardens, and even details like granite curbs and brick drains. It's clear that this didn't happen because of some grand old scheme in downtown Seattle. It happened over a long period of time with separate people making separate thoughtful decisions on what make th might make this neighborhood a better place to be. That's why it's so important that there be a consciousness at the uh, level of the elected official in the engineering department, right down to the individual neighborhood citizens, a consciousness of the kinds of details that turn a neighborhood in a great place to be and live. See, when people bike to work, that means less air pollution. Now, now, without bike lanes, then it's hard for people to bike to work, so, so there's more cars on the road, and that makes more pollution. And then when there's more pollution, the air's bad, and then it's really hard for people to bike to work. See, it's like a cycle. It's like a bicycle. It's like a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> See, bikes mean less pollution. So when you, when you think street design, think bikes. I gotta go. Yeah, now, where was I? suppose he decided to walk home, struck by lightning? Or maybe it's that streets workbook he got hold of. Ah, he finally sees past his car windshield onto a street that's not just for cars, but for people too. Welcome to a new way of thinking. Now it's your turn to get hold of that streets workbook. It's called the Making Streets That Work Workbook. It offers much more information on planning for street improvements and more details on the projects in this video, like how long they took, how much they cost, and where the money came from. You can get your workbook by calling the Neighborhood Planning Hotline at 684-5140. Just ask for it by name, the Making Streets That Work Workbook, brought to you by the City of Seattle. Hey, it worked for me.